So it's winter time in Montana, and we love the snow, but you can see the creek is still flowing. If you're planning on training your little one how to be a tactician, there's a little bit that everybody should think about before you start doing it. You know, I've had the opportunity to train men both here in the U.S. and abroad, and training grown men and children are two different things, especially when it boils down to your child that loves you more than anything in the world. You know, it really takes a lot of patience, and you have to understand that children are filled with mistakes. And that's kind of the beautiful thing about it, you know? The time that I've spent with my boy, even though we do something that so many consider to be grown up, like shooting guns and studying tactics and strategy, the truth is, it's been a great thing for he and I both, because we spend a whole lot of time together. And I'm training him to be somebody that doesn't have to worry that violence ever comes calling. But in training him, you know, you have to remember with your children that life is fun and they love you and they trust you. So you gotta be careful. You know, there are times when, uh, especially when you're dealing with guns, that you've gotta be firm. But you always wanna be supportive and inspiring because they love you so much, they take everything you tell them to heart. Even if a child doesn't seem to be listening, believe me, they are. And above all else, they're watching what you do. So if you want to take the time to train your children with firearms and anything in that realm, remember to show them how to do it. Don't just tell them. And you better be doing it right. Because if you see something in your child that you don't think is right, you might have to look at yourself because really emulation is what children are all about. I hope you enjoy this episode. Keep safe. I have to admit, as I sit and watch the video, it's actually pretty funny. But you know, you look at him, he's nine years old, he's running around with about 25 pounds worth of gear, including his rifle, and it's kicking his butt. And that's something that a lot of kids don't learn. You know, they go to the range, they have fun with their guns, but now they're learning about working with a gun, being safe with a gun, being accurate, and all the other things involved in safety. Field work is so incredibly important in all aspects of tactical and strategic thinking and moving with a firearm. Where to step, how to walk, how to get rid of your tracks, how to walk through a creek, how to utilize brush, the proper usage of cover, how to store your equipment, how to use your equipment, how to think ahead of your adversary so that you survive in the end. All these things are just a small portion of what it takes for the average person to begin to learn in reference to surviving in a tactical and a strategic atmosphere. Put that in the hands of a nine-year-old and you're going to see a lot of things that aren't the same as dealing with a full-grown man. Children are so beautiful within themselves, but if you're going to take the time to teach a child what usually isn't taught until they're grown up, you have to understand that they can only take on so much and even recognizing that walking around with gear in an adverse environment, walking up ice-laden hills in the snow, or trudging through 100-degree days are something that children are, are not used to. But once you teach them those things, they're astronomically great at it. And learning at a young age, a child is given the opportunity to be great when they grow up. Though I'm not looking for my son to be a fighter, I don't really want him to be a soldier or a policeman. I hope for him to be a pianist because I don't want him to live a violent life, but I've taught him how to survive if it comes calling. All right, Ty, can you hear me? Uh-huh. Okay, we got three tangos out there. We're gonna hit them red, blue, orange. Copy that, red, blue, orange? Red, blue, orange. Red, blue, orange, okay. On you when I tell you to strike, red, blue, orange. If you strike each one, I won't fire. If you miss, we eliminate all of them. Got it? Got it. Red, blue, orange. Red, blue, orange. On you. Smooth on that bolt, son. Remember to keep your face on the cheek piece. Work that bolt smooth and hit your targets. Red, blue, orange. Hit them. Good shot, son. Blue. Orange. Eliminated. Target down. All right. 
close your cap. Tripod down. Go backwards. The three amigos no longer <laughs> so anyway we got in our final firing position and Wyatt with his little bolt gun was supposed to take all the bad guys out and the plan was if he took everybody out one by one I wouldn't fire but I'd cover him if he made any missed shots what happened there tiger well I got the first and second one which were pretty far but then the third one which was the easiest one the what the easiest one gotcha um my mask went down and snapped me in the eye while I was pulling the trigger, so that made me miss, and then my spotter got him, which is him. Yeah. And went, <laughs> Stop him. That's right, right? That's how teams work, right? We cover one another all the way through, and that's why all the field work we did today, we're always covering each other, watching each other's back, helping each other with our gear, right? Right. So our gear is pretty cool today. This is kind of hodgepodge stuff, right? I mean, we're going to SHOT Show next week, so we're hoping to score some new stuff, and and uh, so we'll be matching, but you know, we're always trying new ideas. Not everybody has a bunch of money and can buy the best in gear, you know? So if you look at our guns, right, we paint our guns up, of course, we're rattle can experts, or amateurs, whatever you think. But you know, we do that snow wrap on there, that's great stuff, I mean, you can use it and reuse it. After about a year or two, it kind of wears out and you gotta get new stuff. But you know what's really interesting is there's not a lot of really great snow camouflage gloves out there. So if you see kind of the stuff we have on our gloves and on our face, you know, that's just bandage tubing, the medical bandage tubing. You can buy stuff for your body, uh, appendage size and everything like that. It's the same stuff we had on our face. Now, it's not perfect. They can grab things and snag. But in reference to camouflage, if you just want to try things out, right, our idea is to always try things out. And then, of course, you know, we're kind of in the invention industry is to create things that will simulate that. Now my stuff is rock solid, right? This is heavy duty stuff, like if you're in the Arctic, you can see my bottoms and tops don't match. I don't know what happened. But, uh, you know, I really like covers better, like Wyatt's. His is better for the grass too. I kind of like his pattern better for where we're at. But the great thing about covers as opposed to a big heavy harness like this, right? Heavy jacket and pants, is if you get into an environment where the snow really begins to clear up, so maybe you've got a lot more tree trunks uh, and the greenery, you might want to ditch your top, get rid of the snow on top when you're walking through the trees. But if you've got covers, you can just ditch that cover and have, have camouflage on below it, and then you can keep warm the whole time. So for snow myself, unless you're like in an Arctic region where you're constantly in the white, I would say cover-ups are better because you can ditch them quicker. And then uh, I just want to thank my partner, Thanks. Doggone good shooting tiger. I sure like that hat. Where'd you get that? From this guy right here. I know. He's pretty cool, ain't he? Good looking <laughs> fella too. Yeah. So hey, I hope you guys enjoyed it. We got a lot of field work and stuff like that. Did some shooting at the end. We're going to the SHOT Show next week. Everybody keep safe. Right? Right. Yeah, keep safe. Keep safe.